Report cards have been around for a long time. This one from 1825 looks like a banknote. When it was written, schooling was a luxury few families could afford. No A's or B's in Sunday school back in 1829. Apparently, what mattered then was how many verses of scripture you memorized. Young Elias mastered 331. Harvard, the oldest university in the nation, began keeping score back in 1827. Each student received a mark on a scale of zero to eight every day for every recitation with deductions for missing chapel or violating curfew. 17,000 was a perfect score. In 1837, Henry David Thoreau graduated from Harvard with just over 12,000 points. He criticized the point-keeping system. In response, Harvard called Thoreau indifferent. When I was in elementary school back in the late 40s and early 50s, we didn't receive points or even letter grades. Instead, we received check marks, satisfactory or improvement needed, for everything from silent reading to posture and cleanliness. But my teachers always wrote comments on the back. In first grade, I was cooperative and helpful most of the time. In third grade, Mrs. Pulaski told my parents that my attention was rather scattered and that I lacked incentive. Comments kept on coming all through high school. John has difficulty in organizing his time effectively. He procrastinates, then studies desperately. At the time, those comments got me in hot water at home. Now I understand that my teachers felt responsible. They felt they were failing me just as much as I was failing their courses. For example, the head of my high school wrote to apologize to my parents. It disturbs me no end that we are not doing thus far a better job with this good and capable boy. Do teachers today feel responsible for their students' performance? Maybe they do, but you can't tell it from the report cards. Remember those comments my elementary teachers made? Here's my son's sixth grade progress report. Lots of space for comments, but not a single word. Here's one daughter's first grade report from a few years later. She too earned better grades than I did, but still no comments. And notice that the space for comments is shrinking. Instead of comments, the schools began sending more pages. Another daughter's fifth grade report went on for 11 pages, mostly machine scored gibberish, like low word, one quarter div dict. Even less space for comments left empty. The teacher probably had to spend all her time collating. There is a pattern here. Machines are taking over. At Boston College, students pick up grades and class ranking from automatic teller machines called U-Views. No faculty comments on these, for sure. How about computer programs for testing and grading students? This one uses a keypad to do away with time-consuming hand grading. Properly used, technology can make report cards more personal, not less. Donald Sneed, a professor at the University of Mississippi, created a video report card, words that parents can listen to instead of read. But the unmistakable trend is away from words and toward letters, A, B, C, and so forth, and not just in school. Everyone and everything gets graded, from athletes to movies. Begin. We have a national educational assessment. We're moving in the direction of national testing and a national report card. The best report cards are the ones where the teacher speaks up. They're personal. A grade just doesn't say enough. All those letters and numbers on my old report cards don't mean very much today. But the comments, even the nasty ones, tell me that my teachers were paying attention to me even though my mind might have been somewhere else. <laughs>